How Britain and France Created a World Powerhouse Together The UK and France have a long history of cooperation in military and diplomatic affairs. But it was not until the 18th century that they became a world power. Famous for their navy, France has always been one of Britain's most important allies. This cooperation is especially true in the aftermath of World War II, when both countries were on the same side against Germany. The British-French alliance was strengthened during the Cold War, when both countries were NATO members and allies against communism. The two countries have also been close partners in trade since then, with many other European nations following suit. It is possible that France will be receptive towards the UK after Brexit, due to Britain's close relationship with France. However, it is difficult to predict how much influence Paris will have on London in the long run. In the shorter run, France will be in a position to have a significant impact on Brexit negotiations. After being elected as president in June 2018, Emmanuel Macron attempted to put pressure on the UK to negotiate a deal that maintained the status quo and continued access to the single market for EU member states. The UK cannot be in control of negotiations if it is not part of them. Marie Barnier, Michel's wife and political advisor, has stated that France will use its influence over Germany during Brexit negotiations. Theresa May has been accused by her political opponents, such as Labour Party leader Jeremy Corbyn, of not being willing to negotiate a deal that would maintain the status quo and continue access to the single market for EU member states. In December 2018, Theresa May was forced to threaten the EU with a no-deal Brexit in order to secure a deal. France and the United Kingdom participate in the Five Power Defense Arrangements, FPDA, which are also called Five Powers. This agreement has been ratified by France, the UK, Australia, New Zealand and the United States. Reflections on Franco-British Relations in the 20th Century Franco-British relations has been marked by a complex and often ambiguous relationship that has seen periods of war, cooperation, and conflict. This video will explore the history of these relations, their impact on international politics, and the future of their relationship. France and Britain have fought the Nazi Germany during World War II. The history of France and Britain has been intertwined since the 17th century. Their alliance dates back to 1689 when they joined forces to reign in a revolt against Louis XIV, the Sun King. France is a country located physically in Western Europe, but culturally considered part of continental Europe. The history of the relationship between France and England began centuries ago when England was a part of the Kingdom of Scotland. Over time, the two countries went through various conflicts and made treaties with one another to ensure their mutual security. In 1707, under the Treaty of Utrecht, England ceded its claim to France in exchange for France recognizing the Kingdom of England. Their relationship has also provided both countries with a strong economic and geopolitical alliance in the post-World War II era. The Franco-British relationship begins with the War of 1803-1814. It was this conflict that resulted in the Treaty of Paris in 1814, which gives Great Britain control over Canada parts of South America, and nearly all French possessions outside Europe, with only Greece and some islands remaining. This treaty is commonly referred to as a curse, in that it has set the stage for conflict between both countries for many years to come. France's military, La Royale, was defeated by Great Britain at the Battle of Waterloo on June 18, 1815. But France quickly recovered and emerged victorious over England in a series of other wars during late 1800s. This led to a period of rapid growth and modernization and the emergence of France as a major European power. France's long history as an ally of the United States also contributed to the country's status. France and America fought many wars together during this time, including World War I and II. With French forces in North Africa during both wars, and again in Vietnam during the 1960s. The French Revolution had started in 1789, and in 1799 Napoleon Bonaparte seized power in France. In his first year of rule he made peace with the United States, and he also forged alliances with other European countries. Quasi-military organizations were established in France, as were a number of industries that resisted capitalism. These factors helped raise France's status in Europe, along with its military power. The bicentennial of the French Revolution was a year-long celebration in France. 
How the Entente Cordiale between Britain and France still matters today. The treaty was a major turning point in European history. Britain was very eager to keep its empire intact, so it agreed to renew the treaty with France. France and Britain have a long history of rivalry. The British took French territory in North America, which led France and Britain into a war. That is why Britain has a lot of influence in European affairs and France doesn't. Before the treaty was signed, France and Britain often fought against one another. The treaty gave France more control over territory in North America. The treaty didn't give France control over any of Britain's colonies in the late 1800s and early 1900s. The Treaty of Versailles was a treaty made in 1919 between the Kingdom of England and France. This treaty helped to end World War I. It also laid out the conditions for Germany's return to international society. It was signed by the Allied powers, the United States, France, Great Britain and Italy. In 1932, Adolf Hitler came to power in Germany. It was at this point that the Treaty of Versailles was amended with a peace treaty specifically dealing with Hitler's regime. Hitler used the Treaty of Versailles for his own political gain, repeatedly violating it in his quest for power. Specifically, he was upset with the limitations placed on German military capability and wanted those to be removed. He used this aggression as a reason to be removed from control by appealing to German nationalism. Hitler believed that Germany was a master race who deserved to expand and conquer. The Treaty of Versailles contained the following provisions, which were later accepted by many of the victors as a basis for a lasting peace. These include The establishment of the League of Nations A large reparation payment to compensate for war damages in Germany An independent Albania and an independent Cyprus A provision for the territorial integrity of Austria the annexation of the German colonies, including Togoland and Cameroon, as mandated by the League of Nations. Dot an allied occupation zone in the Rhineland. The treaty came into force on January 10, 1920, when Germany officially signed it in Paris and ratified it. The Treaty of Versailles was an attempt by the victors of World War I to impose punitive terms on Germany in order to cripple the German economy and prevent future wars. Thank you for watching The Secrets of the Entente Cordiale Sign between Britain-France in 1904. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel, please.